inked. Got an anchor. Good day. Well, we're on to a little bit, something a little bit different today. Um, some of you guys might be wondering how it is I afford my race car stuff. Well, it certainly is not YouTube. <laughs> Maybe someday, but not today. This is what I do, and that's why my name's Skipper Al. This is my, my workhorse, the Nordic Spirit. Oh great, we got a float plane taking off here. BRB. All right, it's gone now. Yeah, this is my mighty fine workhorse here. We got 500 traps built on the boat, ready to be splashed into the water. And then we're able to fish, uh, fish for the next roughly 30 to 40 days, um, depending on what management says. Can't really even really see the boat right now. It just looks like a big beehive. And here's a couple salty dogs. Hey, bye. Bobby, this is one. And AD. Hey. Who else is there? We got Squarehead. Oh no, it's Bella. <laughs> Bella and Squarehead. Squarehead Beaver, Corporal Beaver reporting for duty. And my main man, Schwan. Schwan. <laughs> Cut loose, boys. Here we go. This is my wheelhouse. And uh, we're going fishing here. A little disgusting McDonald's coffee to start the day. The last time though. So we are out of here. So yeah, this is it. Wheelhouse. There's, there's, that's gonna be my bed, but uh, I haven't set it up yet. And uh, navigation. The old skipper's chair and my lovely wheel. And down here is the hole. Here's our destination here. Roscoe Inlet. Roscoe P. Cold Train Inlet. That's where we do all of our prawn fishing. It's been good there the last couple years. And here we are heading out on the open sea. Super excited. So the way it works is we got 500 traps and uh, we're allowed to pull them once a day. So we pull them once a day for usually 30 to 40 straight days. All, all depends when, uh, when they decide to close the season. During the season we have like uh, prawn monitors we call them. They're like scientists that come out on the boat and they index the this the the index the sex of the of the prawns and, and when the index gets to a certain level they'll shut down an area and then when in a certain amount of areas closes throughout the coast wide of BC they'll shut the shut the whole prawn season down so basically you got 30 40 days to catch as much as you can and uh, definitely makes it exciting <laughs> it's usually usually battling with other boats and and uh, yeah, but we get to fish in one of the most beautiful places in the world, so super fortunate. I got uh, five crew with me right now. I'll introduce them to you as the video goes on. But yeah, we're steaming, man. We're steaming. All right. We're getting ready to set here. Give you guys a better tour of the galley later, but this is the galley. It's up the stairs there, down the stairs. Stove, engine room, and forecastle is that way. And then this is our crowded deck. <laughs> Not much room right now. I'm gonna do a little time lapse of us setting out all the gear.
unfortunate events, our normal fishing areas haven't been uh, as productive this year. So you probably noticed my beard's grown in a little bit. It's been a little while since I've done anything because it's been so hectic. But uh, basically, we had to move areas. Um, we had to head south from our normal spot. And now we are in a place called Nitka Sound. Um, absolutely beautiful today's a little bit overcast it's been hot as Hades but uh, yeah so we moved down here it's been a generally slow season coast wide I believe um, I mean there's always somebody doing good out there uh, lots of the time it's us but this year it's just slow so we're here in Nuka Sound we're just fishing away we're just scratching really um, but what do you do? The season's almost, it's, it's, it's coming to an end here pretty soon. I can feel it. Um, but yeah, we're just doing the best we can. Really enjoying the, you know, enjoying the area. Um, we've been doing lots of fun adventures at night, going hikes up rivers and taking the skiff out. But, uh, yeah, so you can see, I'll turn this off so it looks a little bit more it's easy to read, but here we are. Here's the boat. Um, yeah, and this is Nitka Sound. If you zoom all the way out, it's a fairly, fairly large area. Goes all the way up to, um, once you get up to Tassis, you can go west and you get into Esperanza. We haven't done any fun stuff in there yet. I, as far as I heard, it's pretty slow up that way too. So we're just kind of hunkered down here in, in, in Nitka and just moving lots of gear around you can see all these red these red lines are our sets that i've already done and we've just been moving gear every single day um but yeah uh, i guess you guys really haven't seen any of the actual fishing yet so we're gonna haul some gear today and just like every other day and hopefully catch some prawns and yeah lots of fun to be had Pick it up at the end. There's a Johnny. Yeah, get her in the hauler. Very nice. For the coiler. Comes the skipper. Basically, it's the line that goes down to the anchor before our traps start. And I can, I can maneuver the boat with these things. Uh, basically, left, right. This is how I kick the boat in and out of gear. And, uh, and then down here is my hauler control for speed on the rope. And here we have some hauler. goes over to the boiler which boils our, all of our rope into the basket. There's AD, the packer, beaver, the baiter. Usually we haul two or three strings at a time and move them. So right now we got three strings, or sorry, two strings already on the back deck. That's 100 traps. 100 traps. So we'll haul this one and then we'll go set all three somewhere else. Sean pat the rope down, nice leg.
do it. So that's the first anchor and now we'll have 50 traps until our next anchor. Looking good, fellas. Good mix. That's a real nice mix. This right here is Bobby's hot mix. Bobby's hot mix. Cameraman made this guy's Three, three separate 
entries that the frogs can get in. A little bungee there to keep it closed. Big cup and a tag. This is what we call the asshole. It kind of looks like an asshole. It's very nice. There's a nice prawn right there, fellas. Happy as a, oh, there she goes. So all the prawns get packed into the boxes. Real nice like. Big ones. Oh, a little baby octo. Oh, inked. Got an anchor. Still got all my uh, one thing you don't want to do is run your fingers through that fucker. can see it but other ends right there baby that's undersized we'll get her next year and that is a blank Two seconds. Yeah. It's the second time we've lost an anchor right here. What the fuck? What are you gonna say about that? Probably a splice or something. Yeah. There you go. So we probably got about 30, or sorry, probably 20 pounds on that string. That's about as bad as it gets. That sucks. But nice well, we did get her, sure, nice. Look at that big boy right there. Oh, let's get some life. From these bags, we'll, if, if, we're, if the fishing's good, we'll put them in our live dome, and when AD gets a chance, she'll pack them into our nice box. Preservative. Oh, sitting there for a good 10 minutes. And then they go into these boxes here. Real nice, like. Sean here. Put it back in there. 
His hands move so fast half the time you can barely tell what he's doing, folks. <laughs> That's how you do it. He's lost, it's folks. No, I need my fid. Oh, sorry. That's what you call a fid. It's a fid. Let's see how it works. Now, I might have to put her in slow motion for you folks at home. <laughs> See what that looks like, Sean. So that's you the start. Work all the way up. Start of a splice. See if I can find one here. Hmm. There's a splice right there. Duck wash here and uh, on to the next string, folks. See so, ya. Yeah. It's been like that for us. Uh, basically, we've sat on that spot twice, maybe, yeah, twice now. First time it was pretty good. Second time, uh, it's done, which is, that was the second time. I, I thought it was good enough yesterday to set back on, but that was not a good string. Um, there's lots of boats fishing here, so it makes it hard to find room to put your gear. Um, but for now, we'll just we'll just pick up those three and move them. You can see here on my chart. That's where I set it. Uh, oh yeah, that was the third time. So the the second time was still good. I thought maybe I get one more set out of it. Uh, maybe in a few days I probably will. But uh, you gotta let some new prawns flood through. Um, you can see here the two dark maroon lines are previous sets, and then this pink line is. Uh, that's the set we just did. Um, I've got it. I've got all my soundings turned off to make it simple for you guys to understand. But basically, I got a fancy, a fancy uh, transducer and sounding system on here, so I can actually map the bottom uh, way more efficiently than the single beam sonars. So if I turn on my depth shading, you can see exactly uh, all that stuff I've mapped out. So over here, you can see that I haven't mapped out anything. Uh, it's not ideal prawn ground, like the bottom's not very right, so I haven't bothered going over here yet. But here along this edge, you can see that I've actually mapped out the whole edge. So uh, the the darker reds are, are shallower, and as you get deeper, it moves to green. And basically, I've been finding them in about 45 to 50 fathoms, so that's why I kind of set along this, this bottom of the edge here. Um, I've set a few other strings along this edge and they've been okay but uh, we're gonna take these three somewhere else and try try something new here because this spots tapped out for now okay well I've gone up the inlet a bit here um, I noticed that there's someone else's end right here heading this way so I found some room here I'm gonna set in towards Friendly Cove and around this corner and I'm going to dump as many strings along this edge as I can. I haven't fished here yet so hopefully there'll be something. Uh, a place called Friendly Cove right up in here. Beautiful spot. Um, we went in there, we rode in there the other day to see if we could get some sports fishing gear for when we're done for the day and uh, the kind fellow in there sold us some. It's a beautiful little sort of float house. There's a bar and stuff in there and like a lodge. But yeah, really cool spot. Uh, I'd like to come back someday on a holiday. That'd be nice. So anyways, we're gonna let her go here. Let her go, boys, let her go. We'll do a set. Sean gets his bite here. Letting Al know we're ready to let her go. One anchor here. Let her go, boys. Let her go. One. Sean will 
snap a trap after every becket here. Line comes out of the basket. Through the setting ring there. There goes a the becket, there goes a the trap. Spacing out some beckets here. He grabs an anchor. Table. Anchor away. Comes. There she goes. And there you have it. Just blasted out all three of those strings. You can see the difference of quality of what I get for like versus like this is just a normal chart. But check it out when I add these overlays. I can get every little pinnacle on my chart and set it exactly how I want it with that fancy sounding system. So you can see I've followed 4550 contours on all three of these strings. One, two, and three. Yeah, so hopefully those will uh, produce some prawns for us. In the meantime, we got Seven more strings to haul today. Well, uh, this is a bit more justice to how friggin' beautiful this place is on a nice sunny day. Look at that. Big mountains. Really nice. We are approaching our last day of the season now. Um, today is the second to last day, so the last day of setting the gear. Tomorrow we'll haul it all back and head her home. Just hauled the last traps in. Gonna go say hello to the Rand. Our partners in crime here. It looks like they're holding all in the last of their strings too. <laughs> See you guys later. Woo <laughs> woo!